Today we're going to be talking about how to find mass and center of mass of the figure that we've been given, which is just a triangle with vertices at 0, 0, 0, 3, and 2, 1, if we've also been given the equation rho of xy is equal to x plus y. And remember, this is the Greek alphabet character rho. In a problem like this where we need to find mass and center of mass and we've been given an equation for rho, the equations that we're going to use to find mass and center of mass I've written here in our reminder section. So to find mass we're going to use this equation for m and we're going to take the double integral of our equation for rho. Then to find center of mass we need to find x bar and y bar which are remember for x bar the average value of all of the x values in this region, and for y bar, the average value of all of the y values in this region. So one thing you would need to do with this problem before you got started with finding mass was to find the equations of the lines that connect the coordinate points 0, 3, and 2, 1, and 0, 0, and 2, 1. So I've gone ahead already and done that, assuming that you know how to find the equation of the line. I used the formula for the point-slope form of the equation of the line and found that the equation of this line here is y equals 3 minus x, and the equation of this line here is y equals 1 half x. We're going to use those as upper and lower limits in our double integral to find mass. So let's go ahead and calculate mass. We're going to say here that mass is equal to, when we're taking the double integral of this region, we want to integrate first with respect to y and then with respect to x. So when we define our limits of integration here, our outer integral and our outer limits of integration are going to identify our upper and lower limits of integration with respect to x. Well, the leftmost point of our figure here is at the line x equals 0, right here along the y-axis. So our lower limit of integration for x, the leftmost value that x can be, is 0. The rightmost value that x can be in our interval here, in our region, is 2. You can see it right here. This point here at 2, 1 is the rightmost point of our region, so the largest value x can attain in this region is 2. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Then for our inner integral here, this is going to be the integral with respect to y, and so we want to add our limits of integration with respect to y. Well, our lower limit of integration with respect to y is going to be defined by the line here that defines the lower bound of the region. And we know that that's the line y equals 1 half x. So our lower limit of integration will be 1 half x. Our upper limit of integration for y is defined by this line here, which defines the upper boundary of our region. And we know that that's y equals 3 minus x. So we're going to have 3 minus x here for our upper limit of integration. Then we're going to take our equation for rho of xy, plug that into our integral here, and then write in here dy dx. And remember that double integrals like this are like a sandwich. So because our inner integral here has limits of integration with respect to y, we need dy as well on the inside. Because our outer integral here is from 0 to 2, that's with respect to x, then dx goes on the outside here. So now that we have our double integral set up for mass, we can go ahead and evaluate it. dy here on the inside tells us that we're taking the integral with respect to y first. So when we do that, we're going to go ahead and treat x as a constant and y as the variable. So if x is a constant here, then the integral of x will just be xy. The reason for that being if you imagined that x was equal to, let's say for example, 3, which is also a constant, right? If we were taking the integral of 3 with respect to y, the integral would be 3y. Well, x is no different of a constant in that scenario than it is in this one, so we just add the y to it like this, our integral of x is xy. And the integral of y is simpler, it's just 1 half y squared, we know that by the power rule when we take the integral. And we're going to be evaluating this on the limits of integration we have here. I'm going to go ahead and write y equals 3 minus x and y equals 1 half x to remind us that we're going to be plugging in these values for our y variable when we evaluate here at these limits. And notice that I also just left the outer integral with the limits of integration with respect to x and the dx because everything inside here is going to be with respect to y. We're going to plug in these limits of integration for y and we're going to get a simplified equation in here that will then integrate with respect to x and evaluate at limits 0 and 2. 
So now I need to evaluate on the interval 1 half x to 3 minus x. So I'll leave my integral from 0 to 2 here. Remember I'm plugging these values in for y. And whenever you evaluate like this, this definite integral, you plug in your upper limit of integration first and then subtract whatever you get when you plug in your lower limit of integration. So the upper limit of integration will plug in 3 minus x for y. And we'll get x times 3 minus x plus 1 half times 3 minus x squared, and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration. So plugging in 1 half x for y, we'll get x times 1 half x plus 1 half times 1 half x squared. And then we'll add our dx onto the end here, and we just need to simplify before we take the integral with respect to x. So here for our first term, we're going to get 3x minus x squared plus 1 half. We'll distribute this squared exponent and get 9 minus 6x plus x squared. We get that when we multiply the quantity 3 minus x by the quantity 3 minus x. Then here we get minus 1 half x squared. For this term here, inside the parentheses, we'll get 1 fourth x squared when we distribute this squared exponent. 1 fourth x squared times 1 half is 1 eighth x squared, so we get a minus 1 eighth x squared because we bring this negative sign here and apply it to the 1 eighth x squared. And then we just have here dx. Now if we simplify further, we'll get again 3x minus x squared plus 9 halves, we're starting to distribute this 1 half, minus 3x plus 1 half x squared, minus 1 half x squared, minus 1 eighth x squared dx. And what we can see at this point is that we can cancel a few things. First of all, we have 3x minus 3x, those are going to go away. We have a plus 1 half x squared and a minus 1 half x squared. So those will go away as well. And all we're going to be left with, if we just jump right up here, we're going to get mass is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of 9 halves minus 9 eighths x squared dx. And we pulled that 9 halves out in front because it was positive. We wanted to lead with a positive. And then we have a minus x squared, or you can think of it as a minus 8 eighths x squared minus a 1 eighth x squared is minus a 9 eighths x squared. So we're left with that, and now notice that all of our y variables have been eliminated. We just have x left. We can go ahead and integrate this with respect to x and apply our upper and lower limit of integration, 0 and 2. So we'll get 9 halves x minus, here we'll change the 2 to a 3, the exponent to a 3, and then divide by 3. So we'll get 9 over 24 x cubed, and we'll evaluate that on the interval, 0 to 2. So when we plug in our upper limit of integration, 2, we'll get 9 halves times 2. The 2's will cancel and we'll be left with 9. Here we'll plug in 2 for x and we'll get 2 cubed, which is 8. Negative 9 over 24 times 8, we'll get the 8 to cancel and we'll be left with just 3 on the bottom. 9 divided by 3 is just 3, so we end up with a minus 3 when we plug 2 into that second term. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0, but of course plugging in 0 just gives us 0 for both terms. So we can see that mass here is equal to 6. Now that we know that mass is equal to 6, we can use it to find the center of mass. We'll go ahead and set up our equations for x bar and y bar, or the average x value and the average y value. For x bar, we'll get 1 over mass, which we already found was 6, so we get that. Now we have the double integral, and notice this is really similar to our double integral for mass. It's the integral of rho of xy, except that when we find x bar, we have to multiply here by x. So our integrals are going to have the same limits of integration. We'll have the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 1 half x to 3 minus x of, now here we have x, times our equation for rho of xy, x plus y, and then we'll have, remember, dy on the inside and dx on the outside because our limits of integration with respect to y are on the inside and our limits of integration with respect to x are on the outside. So that'll be our integral for x bar. We can also set up our integral for y bar. It's going to be really similar. It'll just be 1 sixth, the same 
integrals and limits of integration, one half x here to three minus x, except that notice we multiply by y here. We multiply y by our equation for rho of xy, so y times x plus y, and then again dy d x. So those are going to be our two double integrals, and because they are both so similar to our double integral for mass, I'll let you guys go ahead and evaluate them. You're going to follow the same process. Just go ahead and simplify both of these by calling them x squared plus xy, and this one xy plus y squared, and you'll just take the integrals, plug in your limits of integration, multiply by 1 sixth, and what you're going to get for x bar is 3 fourths. For y bar, you'll get 3 halves, and so what that tells you is that center of mass is going to be at the point 3 fourths, whatever you get for x bar, comma 3 halves, which is whatever you get for y bar, and in this case, our center of mass is at 3 fourths, 3 halves. And that makes rough sense because if you look at the figure and we plot the point 3 fourths, 3 halves, we come over here to about 3 fourths and about 3 halves like this. And you can see how it looks like this point could roughly be the center of mass. It's halfway between the lowest point at y equals 0 and the highest point at y equals 3. And it's a little closer to the line x equals 0 than it is to the line y equals 2 because we'd have to put the center of mass over here to balance out the larger amount of mass that's over here. So that's a good check if you find your center of mass and you plot it and it's outside the figure or it's way over here or something like that, you know that you probably got the wrong coordinates. But that looks like it could be about right. So our center of mass is at 3 fourths, 3 halves. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.